This is chapter 9 for conics. We're going to be focusing on distance and the midpoint formula today. We look at the distance formula and essentially the distance formula is the Pythagorean theorem where you take your x values and you subtract them and square that quantity take your y values subtract them and square that quantity it's okay if the x1 comes before the x2 you just need to be sure the y1 comes before the y2 for that problem so as we start to work with this first example I suggest to label your points so your distance is going to be x2 minus x1, use parentheses around the negative, y2 minus y1, negative 3 plus 5 squared, negative 1 squared. So we've got 2 squared plus a negative 1 squared. 4 plus 1 gives you the square root of 5. For classifying this triangle, a scalene triangle, No sides are congruent. An isosceles, at least two sides are congruent. That would also mean that two angles are congruent. And then an equilateral. All sides are congruent and also all angles would happen to be congruent in that situation also so we'll come down here we'll look at the length of a B so we've got for X values we've got 1 minus 5 And 5 minus 3 negative 4 squared 2 squared 16 plus 2 or 16 plus 4 gives us a square root of 20 that can be simplified down into 4 times 5, which is 2 root 5. BC, our x values are 5 minus 2, and our y values are 3 minus 1. So we get 3 squared plus 2 squared which is 9 plus 4 to square root of 13 so that's different than a B so it's definitely not equilateral it's possible that this is isosceles so we'll look at a C so with a C the X value is 2 minus 1 quantity squared. The y values are 1 minus 5 quantity squared. So we get 16 plus 1 is the square root of 17. So we have a scalene triangle because no sides are congruent.
on the on the second page is the midpoint formula. We can see up here that the midpoint formula is the x's added together divided by 2 and the y's added together divided by 2. So essentially that's the average of the x's comma the average of the y's. The midpoint is a location so it has parentheses around your final answer. So we'll come over to our point. There are two points that we're going to find the midpoint of. We'll call this x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have negative 2 plus 4. And for our y values, we have 3 plus a negative 2. Again, notice how I use parentheses around a negative. 2 divided by 2 and 1 half so that takes us to a midpoint of 1 comma 1 half if you were to make a quick sketch of the points of negative 2 3 and 4 negative 2 1 and a half would be somewhere right in between would be the midpoint between those two so that's a realistic location Now we're going to look at an equation. We're going to write an equation for a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector, you're going to have a segment and we're going to cut that segment in half and we're going to draw an equation that goes through that at a 90 degree angle. So we're going to find uh, the length of the segment length or distance. We're going to calculate the slope. We're going to find the slope perpendicular. To the slope of our segment. And we're going to use. Use blank and substitute your X and Y values for the midpoint. Uh, we're going to use, it's called the point slope formula. Okay, we're going to solve for y. So, let's draw a quick sketch so we know what we're talking about. We have the points negative 2, 1. 4, negative 7, approximately like that. Our midpoint will be in here. And we want to know the equation that cuts that line in half and has a perpendicular slope. So we know that our slope of the segment is negative, but the slope of the equation is going to be positive. We know the y-intercept is going to be negative for our equation. So to find the midpoint, we take our two x values and add them together. Take your two y values and add them together. So that's our midpoint. Our slope, if you recall, that's y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Change in y over the change in x. That is called your slope, often listed with an m. That's uh, seen in y equals mx plus b. The slope is listed as an m. So we're going to take our y values, 1 minus a negative 7, and negative 2 minus 4 gives us 8 over negative 6 is negative 4 thirds. So that is the slope of the segment. So the perpendicular slope is going to be the negative
reciprocal of that. So essentially, you'll just flip it upside down and change the sign. That's the quick way to do it. But I like to point out that you can take m1 times m2, the slope of 1, times the slope of number 2, and that has to have a product of negative 1. So our first slope is negative 4 thirds times our slope of the second. So to multiply this out, we would multiply by a 3 to get negative 3. And then we would divide by negative 4. And that would give us the second slope to be a positive 3 fourths. Uh, again, if you just take your original slope, flip it upside down, it's a reciprocal, so it's 3 over 4, and change the sign, in this case it would be changing it to a positive, we would get 3 fourths. So our equation is going to be y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. This is the point slope formula. So y is actually the variable y. y1 is a point that this line is going to go through, so we know that it goes through our midpoint. So that should be a negative 3 for the y value. Our slope is 3 fourths. The x is 1. So distribute this 3 fourths through. And then add the 3 to the other side. To add the 3 to the other side, we're going to need common denominators. So if this denominator has to be 4 to match the 3 fourths, then the numerator has to be 12, so this we're still adding a 3 onto this side. So this is y equals 3 fourths x minus, that would be a negative 3, and it looks like positive 9 fourths, but it's supposed to be negative. Let's see. If it's supposed to be negative, there's something wrong with my numbers. That's why a sketch is pretty helpful. We were to plug in our y values, which was a negative 3. The equation is minus, so I forgot to show my negative aspect here. So that would really show this as a plus. And this would be subtracting 3. I bet some of you noticed this already. This should be minus 3 here. So we should minus 12 fourteenths, which is a negative 15 fourths. That is the line that's perpendicular and cutting in half the segment that we started with.